Thanks for joining us here in the heart of Victoria's high country. With long mountain climbs, twisting descents and exposed valley portages, it's the sort of terrain that really screams out for a lightweight, all-round road bike. Without a major change in the past three to four years, the Canyon Ultimate is potentially starting to feel a little old for a racing bike. However, it was one of the first lightweight race bikes that had an obvious thought put into both comfort and aero. The Canyon Ultimate CF SL Disc 8.0 sits at the lower tier when looking at the three Ultimate iterations. As the price increases from the CFSL to the top of the range CFR, the weight drops and the componentry moves top end. Out of the box and excluding pedals, the bike weighs in at 7.51 kilos. The frame weight is 900 grams, which is 250 grams heavier than the top of the line CFR frame weight that sits above it. Speaking of the frame, let's comment on those stunning skinny seat stays. While they look gorgeous, combined with the VCLS vibration dampening seat post, they're really intended to help smooth out what would otherwise be a harsh ride. The stack on this size small is 546 mil and 385 mil reach, which actually puts it in the range of most 54 centimeter bikes. But regardless of the size you pick, you really find that all of the sizes will remind you that this is a race bike and you're really down in a, quite a nice aero position. At 1663 grams, the DT Swiss P1800 spline DB wheel set isn't exactly lightweight. However, it does strike a good balance with durability and comfort and it's tubeless ready to go. The internal width is 18mm, which is a touch narrow by 2020 standards, and the wheel set comes shot in 25s. However, we fitted it with a more comfortable 28 for the purpose of this review. Up front in this model we're testing has Canyon's own one-piece carbon handlebar and stem, which makes for a smart looking and aero cockpit, and it weighs in at just 320 grams for the medium. The size small we're testing comes with 39 centimeter bars, or 41 for the medium and up, which is on the narrower end, but it should be mentioned that Canyon actually allow you to select a different bar width if you speak to them before ordering. The Canyon Ultimate CF SL Disc 8 comes Shimano Ultegra equipped and lands at 2,749 US dollars. Race ready, light, aero, let's get this bike on the road and see how it rides. Hi, I'm joined by Dave Rome here at Ringer Reef Winery in the township of Bright in Victoria's high country. And Dave, we're here to talk bikes. Specifically, uh, what bike are we talking about today? Yeah, so this one's been part of our field test of mid-level all-round race bikes. And it's the Canyon Ultimate CF SL Disc 8, which uh, is a bike that's actually a few years old now, which feels a little different to the other bikes that are all just released over the last six months that we've been testing. Uh, but this one, despite being a few years old, is surprisingly still relevant and current when you pitch it against other bikes, which is quite cool. So before we dive into the details of this bike, I did want to just add a small correction from the intro, which is uh, the frame is actually a little bit heavier than what we said it was. The CFSL version that we've been testing, uh, which is sort of like the lowest grade carbon that they offer in the Ultimate line, the frame is 980 grams, uh, matched with the fork that's 395 grams. So a little more, but yeah, still extremely competitive. Uh, what did you think of the ride of this thing? Ride was, I felt it was fantastic. It's the sort of bike that I love riding in that it's twitchy and fast and responsive. Um, it's a light frame as well, as, as you mentioned. Um, I, I really enjoyed it out on the road particularly when climbing and uh, yeah, it was, it was a really nice bike to ride. Yeah, for me, what surprised me the most is um, over the last few years, you hear about brands finding the balance of aero and stiffness and lightweight and, and comfort. Canyon's had it all along with this thing, you know, three, three years now, I think it's been out and this bike is actually still more comfortable than the other road bikes we had here, which was, is crazy to think. Uh, and a lot of that is attributed to that, that flexible carbon seat post that they put on this bike. That is a really nice feature on the bike. Uh, that thing is just awesome. It's got like a adjustable setback that you can slide the whole saddle rail back and forth um, and the whole saddle rail clamp. So there's just an enormous amount of range with, the, with that seat post and the flex in it is great. 
on the, that bumpy terrain, look down, you can actually see that seat post flexing underneath you. So, um, and it does isolate you a bit from the road. So great feature there. Uh, in terms of handling, how did you find it? How did it corner and all that? Yeah, it was good. It was interesting. The very first impression I got when I was on the bike was we're riding a size small, which we, we should also yeah. point out. Yeah. Um, and we can probably come back to the geo on that. But uh, so riding a size small, we're on 39 uh, width bars, which are, are definitely on the narrow side of things. I, I straight away, as soon as I was climbing, it felt like I could probably do with an extra centimetre or two there just to get a little bit of leverage on the climb. Mm -hmm. And I was very interested, therefore, to see how that was going to descend because I was worried that it was going to have a negative impact. Really interestingly, on the descent, I didn't notice it so much. Mm. Yeah, and that narrow bar, like uh, the trends in aerodynamics lately, narrowing your profile is one thing that's become popular in the pro peloton. So this is the, this is the bike that has the narrowest handlebar uh, of all the ones we tested. And you know, if you're looking for speed, that's a it's a pretty quick win for, and pretty cheap win on their part. So size small. It probably sounds a bit weird. Uh, the other bikes we've been riding are 54 centimeters. Um, however, when you look at the geometry chart, that size small is exactly in line with the 54 centimeter. Uh, it's, in fact, it actually feels a bit longer, um, which is something to keep in mind because you know Canyon is a consumer direct company. You're probably going to be uh, needing a bit of knowledge when it comes to the sizing of this bike. So it's certainly something to be wary of um, because. You know, uh, my instinct would be to order the medium because that's the size that we we're testing in, say, Giant. But Canyon sizing is a little bit unusual. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I really agree. When, when you mentioned that we would be riding a size small or testing a size small, I was a little bit apprehensive about that. But I agree, it rides exactly like a 54. The other thing to keep in mind with this bike is that Canyon, they tend to do things their own way. Uh, so the front end of the bike, it actually uses an oversized stem. So it's a one and a one quarter inch stem. Uh, it's giant actually do the same thing, but it does mean that your, your options for little things like headset spaces or swapping the stem out or even getting um, new bearings for the headset, it, it can be a little trickier than some other bikes. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, and that is always going to be locked in with that frame. All right, so let's talk about the component spec of this bike. Uh, Canyon, consumer direct company, they're really known for backing in the value for money. I think they've done it here as well. Uh, what components stood out to you as being great? Yeah, I think when we're talking value, I, I really enjoyed the wheel set, the right. DT Swiss uh, wheel set. Um, it felt great climbing. Uh, it was a great descending wheel set as well. But um, I love that. I don't know if you necessarily agree. Yeah, I think for the price point, that wheel set is great. I think it would be asking too much for the, the money that they're selling this bike for. It would be asking too much to see a carbon wheel set on this bike. It's worth noting that that aluminium wheel set is actually lighter than, say, the carbon wheel set that the Trek Monda has fitted. So it's all good there. It's a durable wheel set. It's reliable. I think it's a little on the narrow side as far as the rim profile. And obviously, there's no real aerodynamic quality there. So. Uh, Canyon, the, the price they're selling this bike at, perhaps affords you a little bit less in the budget compared to the competition. So the wheels would be the first thing to, I'd be looking to upgrade if you're, if you're looking to race this bike or, or perhaps get a little bit more um, aerodynamics out of it. I think the other thing worth talking about is that one piece carbon handlebar and stem that's fitted to this bike, which is just insane because all the other bikes that we have on test, despite being more expensive, have separate aluminium handlebar stem. This thing just feels, makes it look and feel like a much higher end bike than the price suggests. Uh, what did you think of that handlebar? I love this cockpit. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. It right. looks pro, uh, it feels fast, it feels aero. Mm. Um, you've got like plenty of different hand positions there. I, I love the flat top and you know, great drop and reach. The, as mentioned, the only thing I would suggest is maybe widening those bars, just, just a fraction. That's yeah. a personal preference. Yeah, sure. Um, and those, the, that handlebar, it's 390 grams. So compared to the, the separate aluminium handlebar and stem that many of the other bikes have, there is some weight savings there. It definitely pays off on the scales. This bike is competitively light uh, and there's room to make it lighter with, with you know, a change of wheels. Another, another positive for me is this bike actually came stock with Continental GP5000 tires, which is a very high-end race tire. It's kind, of, it's kind of a tire that a lot of people love. Uh, it did come stock with the 25mm version, which is certainly on the narrow side. I think we improved the bike by fitting the 28mm version as our control tire. Uh, it's an upgrade I'd recommend, but you know, out of the box, the stock tires are awesome. As far as uh, some of the negatives of the spec, uh, I mean, we, we touched on that narrow handlebar. 
uh, it is being a one piece cockpit, you're locked in. So the stem length, the handlebar width, it's set in stone. It's quite an expensive thing to change. Uh, and that's something that Canyon will actually let you change be while you're ordering the bike at no extra charge. So it's certainly worth pointing out, but you need to, you need to be knowledgeable enough when ordering the bike to know that you want a wider handlebar or a different stem length. Uh, and it's tough because you're kind of left on your own there with a consumer direct purchase. So Yeah, I, I really agree with that. Um, like I said, I was surprised that we'd be testing a small bike when usually I'm a, a, a size 54. So uh, that definitely that, that, that reach is something that I'd really want to be making sure I've got 100% dialed when ordering this bike. Yeah, So and that's, that's certainly the, the biggest downside to, to a bike like this is you really need to know exactly what you want. You need to be confident in your current position and, and basically match it to this thing. Uh, otherwise, you might find yourself with a bike that you know feels a little bit long or feels a bit narrow in the handlebar and then you're stuck with quite an expensive build to get it fixed. So, something to consider. The other thing is uh, the press fit bottom bracket. Um, not such a big deal. They're using the Shimano style, the PF86 st system, which is one of the better options and one of the ones that gives us uh, far fewer things to complain about generally. But uh, with the way the industry's been moving and you know a lot of brands have been moving back to threads, it's just something to point out that our preference is still for a threaded bottom bracket, which is uh, easier for everyone to service. It doesn't require as many specialty tools. So yeah, it's just a little feature to point out as well. But otherwise, there isn't too much bad stuff going on with this frame. And again, that is quite impressive given that it's a few years old now. So uh, it kind of just feels like the latest iteration of road bikes from many other brands have just caught up to this thing. So kudos to Canyon there. Uh, speaking of the consumer direct side of things, Canyon, they absolutely nailed the way they package this thing. Uh, I unboxed it, very little plastic, uh, all reusable packaging. Uh, the box is just really cool. It's their own design. Um, it comes with a lot of little like free giveaways, like there's a little tote bag and included torque wrenches. So a lot of really neat stuff going on here. It was also uh, the brakes, the gearing, absolutely dialed out of the box, which is cool to see. So yeah, pretty easy to assemble. Yeah, very simple assembly and something that uh, even you know a not too handy mechanic can uh, can put together without any fuss yeah. uh, at all. Exactly. So uh, and on that note, like the what's really cool is like the the headset the way that comes is like normally when you take off a stem you lose the headset preload adjustment and then you have to tighten those bearings they've even worked out a way they've got the headset preload locked in separate to the stem uh, so yeah it comes the headset's all t set up you just basically put the stem on tighten up with the included torque wrench and you're good to go so yeah kudos all right so who is this bike for well, this bike is unashamedly a race bike with some pedigree. Um, yeah. So I think really, you know, this, this is a bike that if you're looking to, to race, it really is a, a perfect option for you. Yeah, it's, it's light, it's stiff, it's aero. It ticks a lot of boxes, this bike. Uh, I guess, yeah, just keep in mind that being consumer direct, you really should know what you're looking for when you're buying this. You need to be confident in the fit that you're looking for. Uh, other than that, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about this bike. All right, so that's our review of the 2021 Canyon Ultimate CFSL. If you like this review, please give us a subscribe. And if you wanna know more about this bike, I'm gonna have all the details on it in a written review on cyclingtips.com. It'll be linked in the description below. Also check out all the other content we have from our field test here in Bright. Thanks for watching, we'll see you out there.